So, good morning. Today, we're going to get right into tying. I know it's been quite um, at least a few weeks uh, since we've posted uh, any tying videos. Uh, just life gets in the way, I guess. Um, a work schedule has just been a little bit crazy. Um, and I've been stuck in jury duty for the last uh, four weeks, um, three weeks and a day, something like that. Um, happy to do my civic duty, but after three and a half weeks, I'm over it. So looking forward to um, getting some of my uh, time back. Let's take a quick look. I just want to make sure everything is recording properly it appears to be yeah what the heck we'll go with it um so the last few weeks um and if you follow on instagram um, or facebook whichever you might have seen some postings of some steelhead jigs uh, that's what i've been working on uh mostly um, this last month and a half or so. Um, I've been contacted by a couple different shops. Uh, north, northern New York State, um, up along the Salmon River, um, along uh, Lake Ontario. Um, so I've been doing a lot of salmon jigs uh, that I'll be selling up in that region uh, August-ish, around August, um, for the fall uh, in winter uh, steelhead fishing. Uh, we've been tying a few different uh, sizes, um, 1 8 1 16th, and 1 32nd. Today I'm going to put in the vise a 132nd so let's just switch everything over um, so a 132nd uh, this is what we have the hook is a mustad 32833 it's the uh, black nickel it's a 2x strong hook so it uh, surprisingly has the same diameter as my uh, typical ball head jigs that I uh, uh, cast with the mustad hooks uh, though the difference these are a little bit stronger hooks for the bigger fish um, and the, there there is a slight difference between um, what are the what's the other number three two seven eight six I I'll when <laughs> after the video I'll put the uh, correct number down. The um, fine wire hook that I use for regular pan fish jigs just escapes me for now. Um, but the difference between that hook and the 32833 hook is the height of the eye. So I couldn't, I couldn't use the same molds. Uh, I actually ended up just going with the uh, regular do it molds uh, for the steelhead jigs uh, and they they cast just fine they're 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 decent molds i did notice there's two separate molds um i i ordered the first mold and the smallest size was 1 16th uh, then as i was getting requests also for 1 32nd i ended up buying the second mold do it lists the hook size itself one number off for so i get, as an example the 1 16th taking a number four hook uh it, it says number four on one mold but all but for the 1 16th on the other mold i believe it was a saying to use a number six uh, which i thought was kind of a odd a little bit of a mistake Maybe things changed over the years. I don't know. It really doesn't make much of a difference. Uh, that's nothing that a um, permanent marker. I just handwrite, you know, 
the the hook size next to each jigs jig head size just so I know in the future I want all my jigs to be exactly the same um, but what we're going to do today is um, do I have black on my table I do so in the vise we have a 1 16th ball head and I'm using a 2 watt nylon thread it's a round nylon unwaxed The thread is nothing fancy. I believe this is a Danville, uh, the last of my Danville nylon thread. And we're doing a black and a chartreuse, so I'm just using a black head, or a black thread rather, to contrast. Uh, red is another good color. Um, I've done a whole bunch, you know. Um, these are the one eighth, but as an example, you know, the white with the red, very nice jig, very pretty jig. Uh, we're using just a strung marabou, and these are all tips. And it comes, I have just large bags of the large skeins of the strung marabou where it's connected with a with thread kind of kind of strung together like a scarf I just pull out a whole bunch and these jigs are going to be quite full um, in the sense that the tail itself the body of the tail is uh, going to have some volume and on this jig we're looking for the tail to be the length of the body past the bend of the hook which on my vise is just past this fourth dot. Not quite as long as the uh, entire silver part of my jaws. Measure it out. And just like with our bucktail, tie it in with a couple wraps towards the bend of the hook, couple wraps back. And then we can give this a twist. And I'm going to throw this one away. Hold on. Got a little excited because I didn't open my black yet. And all I see is chartreuse sitting in front of me. So this is live. <laughs> I'm not going to cut out any of the mistakes. This chartreuse marabou is actually a little bit nicer than the black that I have. The black are also tips, but a lot of the um, black feathers that I have, the stems are quite thick. I'm just gonna take these, this pinch that I took right off the top. So there's a tip. And as you can see, the stems are pretty thick, so uh, the technique of palmering the, th the uh, feather on, uh, you know, locking it in like so and then palmering it or tying it in by the tip and palmering it uh, won't really work. But if we take the tips and just pinch them to length, that would look just fine. If some of these fibers at the base just are kind of, they don't match the, the rest of the tips or they're unruly or they're broken or they're kinked. You can peel these away, not a problem. Just to give you the, the volume of a pinch and you want all the feathers to, to look loose and natural. So we start with the darkest color first, just like on a bucktail. We snip our pinch. We're going to just tie this into place. A few wraps towards the bend of the hook. A couple wraps back towards the head to lock that thread into place by crisscrossing it. And we give it a twist just like the bucktail to put the darkest color on what becomes the back of the jig when we fish it. 
Now for the chartreuse, again, here's a feather. This might be slightly sparse. This looks a little, this would look just fine if you tied this on. Though again, like I mentioned, these jigs, the, um, the one shop that I'm tying for uh, requested that they be have a lot of body to the tail. So I'm putting them on a little bit heavy than what I normally would. Here's an example of a tail that I might use for something different, maybe a smaller jig. As you can see, you have some hairs, some fibers that are half, a, half the length. This maybe would look okay if we finished it that way. Um, if I peeled down and just took the very tip, you know, the, the fibers would be more the same length, but we can just set that one aside. We'll go through this one will be much better. So in terms of size compared to the black pinch, this feather is more, uh, much more similar. And as we place this, we can see that the volume, the body of the tail would be about equal, top and bottom. So we just adjust, adjust our pinch until we get the length that we want. Switch our grip one last time. And just like with bucktail, I keep this left hand pinch tight throughout the entire process. These fibers that are sticking out towards the bottom, I try to brush them away. You can wet your fingers uh, if you wish to help hold them back. But here we go. A couple wraps. My goodness. Let's take a look at that. This piece came right off the side. So before I finish the collar, what we are adding and the, let's see, where's my package? That's not the right one. I really have been uh, very disorganized the last few weeks. My uh, desk is a wreck, just cluttered with all sorts of bags and hooks and, and jig heads, and I don't usually work that way. This is an old package, Crystal Hair, uh, Crystal Hair 07, um, Crystal Flash or Angel Hair, um, you'll find those. at your local fly shop. But what, what this is, is a greenish, yellowish, chartreuse type crystal hair. It's not too dark. Um, when we when we add it in just a th uh, two or three strands per side, uh, the color is much closer to the chartreuse because it has those flashes of yellow and silver and gold. But what I do is I take three strands just like with a bucktail jig right down the lateral line let's see what I did is I walk the thread towards the bend of the hook This one seems a little bit trickier than it actually is. Um, you're fighting with two things. One is the marabou.
gets in the way a little bit. It doesn't lay flat like a bucktail. Like I said, you can wet your fingers and kind of smooth the bucktail out of your way. Um, I, I don't mess with it. I just kind of fidget a little bit until I lock the crystal hair into place. But I'm finishing up this bunch and then I have some uh, one eighth. I'm finishing up these one eighth and just solid uh, chartreuse marabou. I have a couple other videos in the works. Um, one on the bobbin specifically used that I use with my size A thread. Um, placed an order a month or so ago just to replace a couple of them. I've had I've had these these bobbins you know easily 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 20 years if not more. Um, some of them I know were from my father's uh, time bench so I know they're even older than that they work great I wanted to add I have a couple on the website um, if you haven't seen it uh, just stop into the website jworthhandtied.com there's some tools supplies jig heads um, inventory is a little bit low on some of the bucktails I gotta kinda catch up with that but uh, we had a really good summer so far um, so I can't complain, but so I ordered a couple of those uh, bobbins. Uh, they're from Jan's Netcraft. They have been the same quality, the same material, the same product since I can remember decades literally honestly um, the number of years I've purchased them and used them and want them specifically for the thin springy steel um, and its overall size and length to hold the 950 yard spools so the you know this is my two watt the black is the 2 watt thread and the uh, chartreuse is the size A 950 yard spool. So this bobbin has been the absolute perfect tool as far as I'm concerned for tying jigs using 950 yard spools of nylon thread. What I received looks similar, though the length, the overall length, well, since I'm getting into this, let's turn that off. So the overall, overall length As you can see is about an inch shorter. The type of steel that these arms are made of is a thicker, I don't even know if it's steel, it, maybe it's a, an aluminum, I don't know, but it's shorter, thicker material, no flex, um, and it's absolutely not what I wanted for a bobbin. It doesn't hold these spools the way you expect it to. Um, you really have to force it in there. And you can't adjust tension. You can't control tension with your hand. You know, that's, this is my break. You know, it's, it's, it's the fingers on my bobbin. That's my break. Um, it's, it's pressure against the palm of my hand. It's pressure um, from my, between my fingers, uh, mostly my ring and pinky finger. 
but you know, so that that was it, it was just unusable. Um, I did contact Jans. I you know their website uh, email contact for their customer service. Didn't hear anything um, after a couple weeks. Tried again. Still haven't heard anything. Completely kind of disappointed with um, the whole situation. Tried looking for other bobbins. Um, I'm not concerned for myself. Um, I have enough. You know, I have I have eight of them sitting right here. Um, each with a different color bobbin or, or diff different color spool. So I'm not concerned about myself. You know, I will have enough bobbins to last my lifetime. Um, you know, what happens when they're all gone? I don't know. I'll find a, I'll find an alternative, I suppose. Um, I did. There are a couple other bobbins that would fit. Um, I did find one from Angler's Tools. <laughs> this thing is a giant ass bobbin. Um, there is no way. Uh, this this would work, um, but it's just too big. Um, the overall length in general uh, makes this not a not a very good choice. But it, it's an awesome bobbin. Um, you know, I can make do with the bobbin with the barrel um, holder, the barrel handle, I guess you could say. That will fit. You are really forcing the um, spool in there. This, I can't remember what brand this is. This is actually a pretty, this is a name brand. And I can't remember which one this is. This also will hold it. Again, um, you're really stretching out the uh, the legs. Um, this it'll fit though the um, the thumb bobbin. I guess this is called, but they call it in some of the cheaper magazines, or, or the, it's a cheaper bobbin in some of the um, catalogs. It would fit, um, but again, just really stretches. The legs on your bobbin it's not ideal um, this bobbin truly was the best bobbin it, it was it was badass so this bobbin actually was so good I have a drawer full of uh, samples buddy of my dad's a fishing buddy Worked in a machine shop. They fooled around with spring steel. Tried to make their own bobbins. When it came down to it, you know, the amount of effort and time, it was easier just to order them from Jans. Um, their test bobbins that I have, they weren't perfect. Um, they're, you know, we save them just because to kind of remember you know what was you know things that dad was working on so to speak um, I don't think they were thinking about selling them and getting rich but if they could come up with a half decent bobbin you know and, and if it was cheap enough you know I know my father would have at least had a bunch made for himself you know so but this one, these uh, next jigs are the um, solid chartreuse. They'll use the same uh, crystal hair. This is where you can get away with. So as you can see, some of the fibers on this tail are slightly shorter. But because this is all one color, I'm going to just go ahead and use this feather. Again, just twisting it around. It 
And if I get too far back on this stem, I can feel this stem really thickens up at the at the base. It's more like a stick. It's, so these can come out. So these jigs will be fished for steelhead is primarily what they're fishing for. Salmon. Um, I'm guessing in the Salmon River, which is northern New York State, the northern tier. Um, I believe they're fishing these mostly under a bobber. Uh, where you you kind of fish it a lot like a dry fly in the sense that you um, your line floats and follows the bobber down. Uh, you mend your line just like you would with a dry fly as the you know you don't want the current to push your line past your your bait, so to speak. So that's how I understand they're fishing these. But I'm doing two things right now. One, I'm tie, trying to tie, cast and tie enough of these to um, satisfy the customers up north for uh, this year, have enough uh, for the sales. But also tie the extra to fill the inventory boxes so I'm not struggling next fall, same time next year. Um, trying to tie the same amount. So I'm trying to build up my inventory as well as have a fair amount to take up north, um, you know, so I don't run out of colors. That's the thing that frustrates me the most when I'm making deliveries. And, and I always bring uh, all the boxes for my inventory so the shop owners might ask for a color that I didn't necessarily know they wanted at first and they might not have known it either. Um, you know, they, as an example, they might have a couple customers that come in the week prior to me showing up asking for one specific color. So of course, if, if that wasn't the color that I'm expecting to be the hot color, I might not have enough dozens for all the stores that want them black and purple bucktail jigs is a great example here in central new york i try to carry with me a minimum of six dozen black and purple each size uh jig each head style and each size of each head style um, and have them in my inventory at all time if I can, if I have the time, I even do more. I do extra. I do black and purple with flash. I do black and purple with stinger hooks. And you never know, you know, how, how many each store wants. And there's been times where I thought I had enough and I sell out of all of them, which is good for me. But if I had another five dozen, I could have sold them too. So, you know. Try to anticipate what people are buying. Not sure. Oh, there it is. Not sure how the crystal hair shows up on the camera. On my monitor, it, it looks quite faint. But as I'm looking at it, as the light shines off it, it's actually sparkling pretty good. So as you can see, the tail is fairly full. It has a lot of volume to the size of the tail. And as this floats in the current under a bobber, the tail is constantly compressing and um, expanding, 
just just um, flowing with the current. So I have another two dozen of these to finish. It was a little sloppy on my painting. As you can see, I just took off a little bit of a, a piece of flash that was on the hook shank. I've had to do that to almost all of these. So I'm a little, I, I, little bit sloppy and before I started painting them, I didn't really look at each of them closely. Um, it's a new mold. They all look pretty clean um, with just a minimal, minimal amount of filing just to make sure the mold line wasn't um, just a big chunk of flash. Oops. Keep this pinch tight. Lock on my thread. See, we're doing this live. Another mistake. So, three wraps towards the bend of the hook and three wraps back. Give it a twist. Uh, what else do we have going on for the rest of the summer? Um, I not a hundred percent sure <laughs> um, I do know uh, my wife and I are taking some time off in August I'm sure a portion of that time I will still be making some videos but we got a couple trips planned um, and like I said my work schedule temporarily um, has uh, changed just slightly. I typically, I do work full-time, do have a full-time job, and typically it's, you know, eight to, eight to five, nine to five daytimes, but I've been working a lot of evenings and weekends, occasional weekday, weekend days, um, the last two months or so. And though I still have time to sit in front of the camera, that doesn't always mean that the house is quiet. Um, you know, there's, there's usually other people around in the house. Um, a lot of these videos that I do, I, I like most fishermen, I, I'm an early riser, so I'll do them early in the morning. And like, I, like I've said in the past, sometimes so early the dog won't even get up with me. Uh, just to give people a heads up, I've been looking at it, but I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to snatch it up, but we are in mid-July right now, and on the eBay, there is a universal set, fly tying set, that does have a universal two vice, just like the one I use, um, in the box. Uh, it looks to be mostly unused. Um, the materials in the box, they're probably kind of old and dry and worn out. Usually the thread will be just fine. Um, any feathers uh, usually, you know, my experience is, is the feathers are usually dry and worn out. But... The, the vice looks to be in, a, in, in exceptional shape. If anybody was looking for a Universal 2, um, I have a couple in my collection that I want to clean up first before I put them on the website for sale. But uh, go ahead, check out the eBay. Um, 
I think the price on it was $75 was a buy it now price, uh, which for the vice alone um, is a fair is a fair price. I don't know the person who um, was doing the sale, you know, so I can't vouch for, I don't know if the vice itself is all that great. It just looked like it was not used very much at all. These are nice jigs. Even with these uh, 2X strong hooks, uh, the wire is still fine enough where in a I could use these for panfish to be honest. Um, bass uh, specifically uh, had a couple comments on some of the larger. I think I've already put them in the inventory. Here's a one sixteenth size, but I've had comments on the one eighth. It's the black with the red thread and the. Red, red uh, crystal flash, crystal hair, which is hard to see. It looks like it's kind of, it is on the outside of the pinch. But uh, a couple bass fishermen t telling me they, they wanted a few of these for bass fishing already. Uh, what else do we have? We got some pink ones here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, pink, black and white. Chartreuse and black we saw. Solid white. Uh, also going to do some uh, red and white. And I got to paint up some more pink heads, but we're going to do some of this chartreuse tail with pink. That head might be a chartreuse in pink half and half. I might I might just take the airbrush and spray that half and half. Let's see, let's get more of this. This uh, strung marabou, I don't know where it's from. I've had some strung marabou and, and hackle feathers in the past that there is a, what would you call it, a master thread on the string that is, is holding the rope together, you know, the rope that's holding it all together. Um, there's usually a master thread that if if you cut that and you pull it, it unzips it, so to speak. So you give the th you give the thread a pull, and you want you want ten feathers. You pull it the length of ten feathers, and and then you can take them off and use them. This one, <laughs> I don't know how it's knotted together. But it doesn't matter which thread I, I snip, where I snip it. Um, the best I can do is, is I'll just kind of measure out two or three inches and kind of cut it and then and then pull it apart, untie the knot and, and get them out. If you try to rip them out of the uh, string, you damage the feathers a little bit. You know, if I was tying only 130 seconds, I wouldn't care that I'm breaking, you know, off some of these ends uh, because the jig itself is so small, it, it wouldn't affect the part of the, the feather that I'm using. Um, but because we're doing uh, 1 8th, you know, we're using, some of these feathers are short enough where we're using the full length of what we have here so trying not to damage the stems if I can help it I 
I've seen many examples where the crystal hair or the angel hair, whatever, whichever brand you're using, I guess, um, is a contrasting color. I, I did do that with um, the red on the white, the red on the black. Um, but for the pink and chartreuse, I picked a angel hair that was similar to the tail color itself. So this flash that I'm adding is kind of a green chartreuse, has some, you know, the, the highlights or the flashes that you see are yellow and green and gold. But a contrasting flash would probably work also very well um, I try not to have too many of the same uh, color schemes uh, that kind of conflict with one another. I try to stick to just one one type of color and kind of that you know that's what I carry in the inventory. I, of course I, I would do custom if somebody wanted purple let's say flash on these that that would be an awesome choice um, but I try not to you know try to have a, a good selection can't please everybody and you never could guess everything that people want um, over time you know I might these might change maybe these will as an example have a purple flash um, if I notice that people think that this color combination is just okay and you kind of see the trend and what people are really preferring of course I'm going to change my inventory that way but before I forget I know I mentioned it uh, a little bit already but the website you can go to jworthhandtie.com has a selection of bucktail jigs uh, streamers uh, hooks and tools and some materials and I'm slowly adding things to the website kind of happy um, when I got this order well, well this order from this one store particularly and then contacted by a couple other shops from uh, the same area but I know in the past I was asked about trout jigs uh, I did uh, you can go back through some of my older videos and there's a there's a jig that we call the John Benjamin that a guy uses here in the um, West Branch, East Branch, and the main stem of the Delaware River. And he is just a brown trout catching machine. And um, it was a jig that I tied specifically on his description, color combination, and materials that he wanted. Uh, he's a local guy from uh, Windsor, um, grew up in the area, his family's been in the area probably for generations, but um, that guy catches some fish, boy. Um, but it was a pattern that I tied for him that when I was asked about jigs for trout, I'm not exactly sure if that was exactly what people were expecting and not that they were disappointed but um, I'm wondering if this was more of, of uh, the type of jig that they were looking for so I'm happy to um, add these types of things uh, to the videos as well as you know just my own knowledge 
I've lived in New York State my whole life. Um, I've been asked to fish up north if I want, you know, trips. I've been offered trips, and I do enjoy catching big fish. Um, I hope, please don't misunderstand. I enjoy catching big fish. Everybody enjoys catching big fish. Um, that's not my main, main focus, though. Um, primarily, walleye, pike, and perch is what I enjoy most. But I'm not a trophy fisherman, per se. I do enjoy that big trophy fish, of course. Um, but but I, I'm just as excited catching... Um, a nice big bluegill as I am catching a 30 inch pike um, so the thought of standing elbow to elbow with guys in a, in a small river you know it's it doesn't appeal to me and I know guys um truly enjoy that uh i i do think that maybe going out west fishing for the same fish but i think that might be a little bit different when you're in what washington oregon washington do they both touch the coast i should know better my mother's from oregon washington at the very least right um, steelhead fishing in that part of the country um, is more appealing to me than it is catching landlocked salmon here in New York State. But that's just a, a personal. That's just a personal thing. This crystal flash, I don't think I mentioned, I am cutting it the same length as the tail. I have seen some examples of jigs where they let this crystal flash extend past the tips of the tail. Um, I've seen some that have either rubber tails or uh, hackle feathers tied on first that come out the center along the shank of the hook. Um, as a tail um, that extends. But I'm sticking to the got a thread that looks out of place but I think it's just the way the feather is sticking through. I'm, But I'm sticking to my preference uh, of proportion, keeping a jig, the tail, the length of the body of the jig past the bend of the hook. Um, it's it's probably pike and walleye specific in terms of how I was taught in tying on a tail to a jig where not to have any hairs extending, um, sticking out any little extra fibers that tickle the nose of the walleye. Particularly, that's how it was always described to me by my father, um, and even my grandfather, um, for that matter, um, where you would, you would experience short strikes because you're tickling the nose of the fish. Uh, he's snapping at it a little bit quicker. Uh, he's missing the bait, and you're missing the fish. So, in my mind, I keep that. Um, to me, a, a jig looks best in, and in proportion when the tail is the length of the pot, the body past the bend of the hook, and that the tail itself is uniform. There are instances where those things that extend past the, the, um, the length of the tail. As long as there's a reason for it, 
and it makes sense and there you know it serves a purpose of course I, I'm all for it um, one of those you know I, I've thought about for years of actually writing a book on jig tying I'd, I'd love to sit down and really think out this explanation and this is live almost live right um, I just threw the cameras on hit record yes I hit record <laughs> um, and in, in just doing this off the top of my head I didn't plan out talk plan about talking about this topic right but um, the tail itself the bucktail and the the proportions of a jig um, I always wanted to exp maybe explain it in a way uh, similar to fly tying how a dry dry fly has specific proportions a streamer has specific proportions um, on one hand jig, jigs seem so simple that it shouldn't be necessary but if you are primarily a jig fisherman just trying to straighten out my hook make it more parallel um, you know the more the more that you really practice and study jig fishing for different species you realize that jigs are more detailed than than they appear on the surface and on one hand you know particularly when it comes to tying a jig a jig a jig is a jig is a jig um, the techniques in the style tying from uh, left to right so to speak is basically the same on every jig yes sometimes that rule is um, not applied uh, but it's specific to a type of jig or a type of material that dictates that it's tied on in a different way but nine times out of ten we're tying left to right uh, we tie uh, in my case, let's say, you know, when we're tying a two-color jig, dark color first, light color second. Um, there's very few details that have specific direction or specific... applied but then again I guess if I really sat down I could be more detailed um, this is a this is <laughs> kind of getting off on a weird tangent but tying a collar um, I touch on it but I don't hear very many other uh, jig tires explain the direction that you're wrapping your thread um, keeping your pinch tight so the materials compressed when, and then when you put your thread around it when you do let go the material decompresses but it is it has the pressure of the thread on it at this point and that there's a specific reason to do it that way right we've talked about the shape of the V and um, the way it keeps your hair from being pulled out um, and probably the biggest reason why I abdicate the, the need not to there's no need to glue your jigs together right um, and I, I, I take a fair amount of criticism for that. Um, some people think I'm wrong, which is fine. Um, there's hundreds of ways to tie a jig. And I'm not against 
different ways of how to do it as long as people know the reasons for using a technique that they that they instruct um, and if that reasoning is sound um, but that's some of those things seeing we're getting I guess we're getting into a little bit of philosophy as well where just like with fly tying I think some of those things are getting lost um, it was probably one of the reasons why I wanted to initially what's eight eight years or so ago do my first flight uh, jig tying video um, maybe in the back of my mind I'm, I'm afraid that that these techniques this craft um, will be lost to time right so I do appreciate uh, organizations uh, the Catskill Fly Tires Guild is a perfect example um, a great organization they uh, actively you know their goal is one of their goals is to just keep the traditions of fly tying um, passed on from generation to generation so they're not lost to the to the to time jig tying is similar always good to learn new techniques I'm not against new techniques either very pretty jig we're going to do one more of these and then I think we'll kind of wrap this video up conversation in my head right now is kind of like usual kind of goes in different directions though I'm I'm really excited I, I'm really happy to have an hour or so where I could sit down and just tie a little bit and turn the cameras on this tail is kind of light and what I'm doing is I'm just looking for another piece and here's an example you know this is a feather that I pulled out of that thread that was binding the the um, the strung marabou together where I it broke the stem but I, I still have this the tip which is very nice but it's it's a little sparse I'm just gonna add those two together see we get a little bit more body just make sure that they're lined up that will look just fine for the smallest jigs um, this since I wasn't tying anything really with black except for that first jig for the smallest jigs let's see this bag of black feathers there's an awful lot of stems real thick stems like this some of the feathers are quite long Actually, I think I put the bag that had the worst defense back. I'm trying to find a, an example. Well, so here's a feather that's much longer. The stem is quite thick at the bottom. But on the uh, 132nd jigs, this tip might not look okay because as you can see, it's, it's kind of like a fan at the end where it's really just two-dimensional. Two, you know, it has 
the the fibers are just coming off the sides not off the front and back so to speak but on the smaller jig you can take the pieces from the sides so they're all individual pieces I could just strip this from the stem sometimes you can fold the stem together just fold both of the both sides in the same direction and I could cut it here um, for the smaller jigs so even on the the feathers that are much longer than this often I'll use the tip but then save the body of the feather for those 132nd jigs but let's finish this one these go fairly quickly I guess I I would have tied many more <laughs> I'm not talking and worrying about my cameras worrying about the battery on my microphone because I haven't turned the microphones on in a month but I charged them right before I put them away so we should we should be okay till the end of this video Uh, talking about other groups that um, are good sources for old information as well as some modern stuff, um, go online, uh, Google um, jigcraft.com. Um, it's, it's an old forum. Uh, it's changed a little bit over the years. Um, I used to post a lot of things to it. Um, not so much anymore. I'm just out of the habit of, of checking that regularly. But uh, they got some really good jig tires. Um, tying jigs for all sorts of fish. It's not one of those sites that's just crappie or just walleye. Let's see um, if I have anything else to say about these jigs. Again, we're trying to keep the collar short. We still add wraps uh, in a way to build up a cone shape, I guess I should say, wider at the head thinner towards the bend of the hook. I'm using 2 watt thread so we get a nice neat collar. Uh, for the 1 8 I could use a size A. That's kind of pushing it. Um, it a size A thread would look a little bit thick um, but on a 1 8 head it would look fine. It would be okay. But uh, this is a 2 watt and like I said I believe this is Danville thread. Uh, what else? I let's see. I think my red. Yeah, my red. As you can see, the spool's a little bit different. Uh, the red actually is a two watt uh, universal vice, and these this color uh, bobbin was um, a two watt good rod. So just some of the old thread in my inventory slowly running out of some of these two watt sizes and eventually I'll switch to just maybe the um, what it is it's the uh, unicord um, unwaxed thread it's a fly tying thread that's not too bad but there we have it I think that'll do it for us today um, I hope you enjoyed uh, just this quick um, turning the cameras on and doing one of these almost lives. Uh, I, like I said, I do have some videos planned uh, that I really need to sit down and, 
and kind of do more formally. Um, I do want to um, do something specifically on those bobbins. And um, then what we'll, we're, we're going to be getting right back into uh, tying bucktails for the fall. Uh, I do have a video planned uh, dyeing some of those tails that we processed earlier this summer. And I um, already have guys promising me tails uh, during hunting season. So also doing the uh, video showing the initial part, the dirty part of that, of that process of um, splitting the tails, taking the bone out, and salting them. Um, As always, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Feel free to um, add any questions or comments. Uh, let me know if there's any uh, jigs that you want to see specific, maybe other types of steelhead jigs uh, that maybe we could tie. Um, give me some ideas. I can take them up north and maybe maybe sell them to uh, those shops as well. Um, as always, uh, uh, as a reminder, um, go ahead, check out the website, jworthhandtied.com. We've talked about some of the things already. Uh, the jigs, tools, supplies, and um, I'm going to slowly be adding to that um, as time allows. But I think that's going to do it for us today. Uh, so until next time, guys, keep tying in tight lines. <laughs>